Hey, everybody. Welcome to 2ZQ Hot Takes, where we discuss issues both big and small. I'm your host, the very handsome Tim Kirk, and today I'll be talking about people looking at their phones. As I sit here waiting for news of my new Samsung Galaxy Note 10, I feel compelled to relate that there is a staggering amount of information about people checking their phones, or as I call it, looking at their screens, and I can only offer a few selected excerpts of relevant material, but there is quite a lot of interest and research into the social sciences around phone use and breakdowns by age, sex, income, education, race, and sexuality. This is certainly a vexing phenomenon. What will take its place? Sooner or later, something always does. All of this information changes as rapidly as it can be compiled, and there are new understandings resulting from data analysis every day. I, as I had previously mentioned, created a TikTok account, and it's not that I am flummoxed. It's more like I just don't get the kick from it that the average kid does. I also posted a TikTok video of me bringing a wine glass up to my mouth and afterwards realized that I am drinking on camera on a platform utilized by many people who are well under the legal age to consume alcoholic beverages. So although I kept that video up, I have decided to restrain from displaying indulgence any further, especially after my nephew's 10-year-old daughter told me she is not allowed to use social media until she was 18, which then made me nod, smiling to my nephew and his wife. So consider the information from various sources. From Variety, on average, American consumers now check their smartphones an average of 52 times a day, according to the U.S. edition of the 2018 Global Mobile Consumer Survey from Deloitte. That's up from 47 times per day in a 2017 study, according to the consulting and professional services firm. About 39% of consumers confess that they believe they're using their smartphones excessively, according to a new study. About 35% of adults say they use their smartphones very often or fairly often for business uses outside normal working hours. As evidence of addiction-like behavior with mobile devices continues to mount, that's raised concerns that social media and smartphones are contributing to depression and other mental health problems, especially among kids and younger adults. Per Deloitte's 2018 mobile consumer study, 60% of U.S. consumers 18 to 34 admit to smartphone overuse, the highest level of any age group. In response, device and app makers, including Apple, Samsung, and Facebook, and Instagram, have rolled out new features to help users track and limit their usage. <laughs> yeah, right. Deloitte's study found 63% of the respondents reported trying to limit their smartphone usage. However, only half of those succeeded in cutting back. <laughs> in any case, it's clear that smartphones aren't going away. In 2018, smartphone penetration has risen to 85% of the population, up three percentage points from the year before. That means an estimated 270 million Americans own a smartphone. And we know that privacy has been thrown out the window. Kids accept every term without blinking, as opposed to my generation, which usually gives cursory glances only and not to the actual text of the length of the terms we are so desperate to agree with in order to create an account in which all of our private life information, opinions, experiences, beliefs, and activities are grist for the social media mill. The thing to me is when older folks get the hang of using smartphones, they become as addicted as kids. It stops being scary and intimidating and becomes a lifeline, which in a, in a good few ways is a very good thing. Going back to the article, the 2018 survey really advances the story of smartphones as the true center of our lives, both inside and outside the home, said Kevin Westcott. While smartphone penetration continued to rise, tablet ownership dropped. 57% of Americans surveyed said they own a tablet versus 62 in 2017. Among other device categories, penetration rates per Deloitte's 2018 survey were laptop computers, 77%, desktop computers, 57%, Fitness bands, 21%, smartwatches, 14%, and virtual reality headsets, or 8%. The U.S. findings from Deloitte's 2018 Global Media Survey are based on responses from about 2,000 consumers 18 or older in the U.S. From Big Think, 
26% of Americans are almost always online, according to new research. If you check your phone in the middle of the night, it says something about you. This is from an article written by Philip Perry, published in March of 2018. A new Pew Research Center poll conducted January of 2018 found that 26% of Americans are almost constantly online. That's up 4% since 2015, and I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't increased by a greater percentage in 2019 already. Unsurprisingly, younger people were the most prone. Around 39% of 18 to 29-year-olds were almost always online. That number has risen 3% since 2015. Interestingly, 30 to 49-year-olds were almost as likely to be glued to their screens as millennials. Of Gen Xers, 35% said they were constantly online. A huge 77% of American adults go online daily, while 43% are on several times per day. Only 11% of adults said they didn't use the internet at all. This rapid rise in near constant use has been attributed to the pervasiveness of smartphones. In November 2017, electronics insurer Asurian completed a study that found the average American checks their phone every 12 minutes, or about 80 times a day. Many respondents struggled to go just 10 minutes without looking at their phone. According to a survey by Qualtrics and Excel, millennials check their phones even more often, 150 times per day on average. Other groups constantly online include black adults, college-educated adults, those from higher-income households, and who live in urban and suburban settings. According to Pew, 37% of African Americans use the Internet constantly, compared with 30% of Hispanics and 23% of whites. Hispanics saw the largest climb in constant use 11 points in 2015, while constant use among whites remained static. So what are the implications? Studies have shown that those who are constantly connected are more stressed, feel lonelier, and feel more likely to experience depression or a sleep disorder. A 2015 University of Missouri study found that regular use of social media platforms increased the likelihood of envy and depression. In the Assyrian survey, 31% of respondents felt separation anxiety when they couldn't check their phone, while 60% were stressed when their phone was off, charging, or out of reach. Most millennials don't go any more than five hours without checking their phone, according to the study, which can be considered addictive behavior. Half of all millennials in that investigation actually checked their phone in the middle of the night. San Diego State University psychology professor Jean Twenge goes one step further. In her book, iGen, she claims ubiquitous smartphone use has ruined a generation. According to Twenge, everyone born after 1995 is on the brink of a mental health crisis. Other psychologists say it's a chicken and egg thing. Is it distress that pushes adolescents towards their phones, or is it constant smartphone use causing distress? It's annoying as hell to me. <laughs> Though it's not considered intrinsically harmful, those who stay online for a substantial period of time are far more likely to develop internet addiction disorder, also known as internet addiction or internet compulsion. It's important to note that most of the studies on extreme internet usage focus on adolescents, though as the Pew poll points out, adults of all ages are now spending a substantial amount of time online. Millennials and Gen Xers are the most likely to report near constant internet use. Some studies find that compulsive internet behavior and mental health problems may be mutually reinforcing. So does that mean if you use the internet compulsively, you have an issue? Not necessarily. So far, the connection between compulsive internet use and having a psychiatric disorder is modest at best so far. Also, our smartphones were made to be addictive. They were modeled at least in part after the slot machine. The advice, consider turning your phone off and putting it in a drawer for certain hours of the day and allow those closest to you other means, such as a landline, to contact you in case of emergency. Also, social media and online interaction should never trump real offline ones. If you find yourself wasting too much time online, get up and talk to a coworker, schedule coffee with a friend or a friendly acquaintance, or just take a walk and stretch your legs. If you can be conscious of your internet use and carefully consider dosage, chances are you'll be more productive and happier too. <laughs> That's rich and convincing. <laughs> Come on now. Just for work alone, most people I know are bombarded with emails, texts, and media, which they are obliged to look at on a social and professional level. 
that does not include any of the personal stuff that is what I have also read as causing neck damage. And even then, it doesn't include people staggering or slowly blocking foot traffic, intersections, escalators, elevators, turnstiles, standing on line to pick up lunch, and the genius in front of you acts like the first animal to walk on land when they have to interact with the hardworking crew member preparing their food or just emotionally blocking out your relatives or family events. Happy hours after work have now become a sullen, grunting exercise of futility if you want to engage in conversation. Drink in one hand, glowing screen in the other, and never looking up unless their immediate situation changes. The most insulting thing is to be chatting with someone else, and they suddenly stop listening to you, which is on you to realize and pretend you aren't demoralized by, because their phone has buzzed, and they just start reading texts. You'll get yours, buddy, don't you worry. <laughs> Something else will take its place, and it will be far worse. It always is and always does. But not to the people who embrace it. Just the rest of us whose capacity for information overload has put their head on permanent tilt. Thanks for listening. See you next time. And as the kitties say, peace out.